to the Holistic Nutritionist Podcast. My name is Natalie Douglas and I am your solo podcast host for today. And we are doing all things gut health Q&A. And I love doing Q&As because it means I'm actually answering the questions you guys want to know the answer to. And I also wanted to let you know that if you have a question that you haven't submitted, please feel free to keep them coming. Send me a DM over on Instagram or you can send an email to podcast at nataliekdouglas.com. I'm always collecting them, collating them, and I'm so happy to put more Q&A episodes together for you guys if you're enjoying these. Before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to remind you that we are currently open for enrollments for the first round of Gut Rescue for 2021. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then I would invite you to go and check out the link in my bio, which tells you all about Gut Rescue. But in a nutshell, it's an eight-week online program that combines the best of a group program context, as well as personalized individual treatment. And we go through all of the elements that are needed to optimize gut health, where things have gone wrong, what you might be suffering from. Um, And we talk about, you know, not just food, but a lot of other things that can influence your gut health and also what your gut health influences, because your gut health pretty much has a finger in every pie. So connections between your hormones, your weight, your skin, your mood, your immune system, and so much more. So if you're someone who is suffering from things like bloating, discomfort, constipation, or loose stools, or you're flicking between both, if you have excess gas or really foul smelling gas, you know, like the dog fart, sulfur smells, yep, talking to you. Um, Perhaps if you know someone who has those, you should flick them the link to. Um, Not sure how subtle that would be, but do your best. And it's also for you if you're someone who has been diagnosed with IBS or irritable bowel syndrome and told to just manage it, or maybe you're someone who feels like you're just over it, right? Like you've been to different practitioners, you've been to um, see, you've, you know, bought lots of pills and potions and powders, and you just feel like no one's actually listening to what you're saying is going on and either just flying blind and throwing shit at the wall trying to fix it um, without actually understanding what's going on or just telling you you need to manage it. Um, I call BS on all of those things. I think one of the most helpful and fastest ways to get results is to get in the hands of a good gut health practitioner that uses testing, uses really thorough questioning um, to help you. And I also really firmly believe in the power of going through a healing process in a group context. So what I mean by that is what I often see in clinical practice is that, you know, and I run, I've done one-to-one consults by themselves, and I also run a really successful fire aid rescue program. And what I know to be true is that it's when we can marry up one-to-one support with a group program or a group um, kind of context and community that people get the best results. And so that's exactly what we've done with Gut Rescue. You get two one-on-one consults with my absolute favorite gut health nutritionist, Sonia Reynolds, who has taught me so much in this space and who um, I've been working with behind the scenes on lots of different cases for many years now, just for funsies, because we love discussing cases. And I will also personally be looking over every single case that comes through to um, more more for my benefit as well. So it's essentially like having two expert gut health practitioners looking after you instead of just one. And then you've also got live weekly group coaching calls um, that are recorded if you can't make it live, access to the private Facebook support group. So you can ask questions of us pretty much 
every single day and will get an answer within 24 hours, which is pretty cool and not something you usually experience when you're only seeing a practitioner one-to-one. And I think goes a long way to that, you know, momentum, accountability, and helping you if you fall off the bandwagon, because let's be honest, it happens, right? And the other thing that I'm super excited about is the eight-week meal plan and recipes targeted at gut healing because I think sometimes when you have gut issues, you can just feel overwhelmed about, well, like crap, I just don't know what to eat anymore. And people either end up eating nothing, a really small selection of foods or eating all of the things, but then experiencing all of the symptoms. And it's it's just frustrating and it does not have to be like that. So we've gone out of our way to make something that's really delicious um, and gut nourishing and is going to help you get results and be able to ultimately expand the foods that you're eating without the same symptoms. So there are only five or four spot, four or five spots left at the moment. The cart was due to close on Jan 31st. However, because I wanted to give those of you who are mums and getting kids back to school, a an extra chance to join us. We've actually extended the cart um, until Feb 4th. However, if spots sell out before that, then um, you will miss out. And I have a number of conversations happening in the background with people who are keen to join. So I anticipate that those spots will be filled up very quickly. So if you are interested, then please make sure that you go to the link in my Instagram bio or just straight to my website, nataliekdouglas.com. You can check out more of the inclusions in the program because I've really just scratched the surface there of what is included and you can also um, sign up there you can book a free gut rescue discovery call which is just a chance for us to have a little bit of a chat to make sure that you feel um, like all of your questions have been answered before joining um, the program if you're a little bit on the fence or you just want a chat so please feel free to do that all right actually there was one more thing If you are going to join, I would love to share with you that there is a $200 off discount code that you can access. Um, And that code is all capitals, gut happy for the upfront payment or gut happy PP, the letter P times two for the part payment. So please feel free to make use of that um, while the cart is still open. Okay. Enough. Let's jump in to your questions. So the first question that is on my list, and this is a continuation. This is part two. So just so you know, guys, if you didn't listen to part one, you don't necessarily have to listen to part one to listen to part two. However, there are a bunch more, I think about 10 other questions that I've already answered. So I'm just continuing on from that list. So the first question is um, half a, half a, yeah, a question. Let's call it a question. So much overwhelming info. So where to start? Question mark. I think this is so common and you're absolutely right. There is a shit ton of information, pun intended, out there regarding gut health. And I have to say that I get quite concerned about how much information is out there because a lot of the time the fix to your gut issues is quite individual. And so an example of that could be if you're someone who we actually know has or suspect has an inte- a SIBO, so a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and you go down the path of that's it, I just want to optimize my gut health, I want to improve it, and so I'm going to go out and buy all of these gut healing foods like sauerkraut and kombucha and bone broth, then you'll often make your symptoms worse because it's not quite the right thing to do as a first step. And on the flip side, if you're someone who's like, I've had enough, I'm going to the health food shop and I'm ordering a gut cleanse that maybe has a bunch of really strong herbs in there, you can actually create damage where 
there wasn't any, like create a problem where there wasn't any. If you're taking the wrong herbs for your particular gut presentation or taking them for too long um, or not focusing on really looking at the whole picture. So my honest opinion in this is that if you have gut issues, please seek help because from a from a practitioner that actually knows what they're doing and this is exactly why gut rescue was created to try and um, serve more of you guys to help um, you know reduce this overwhelm and, and stop you going down that path where we can make things worse and end up spending like so much money that may not have even been necessary and that's where I really think that, when you invest in something that is um, personalized, that's run by experts, you kind of skip that part where you end up, you know, buying, you know, a probiotic here, a gut healing powder here, a cleanse here. And before you know it, you've spent like $300. You're far better off just going straight to getting some actual support. So I hope that answers that question. Um, Next, is gut issues or are gut issues important to correct before trying to conceive? Yeah, look, I do think that this is a really important thing to do if you're able to before you um, are actively trying to conceive or you do conceive. And there's a number of reasons for this. So I guess the most important one is that the health of your gut affects everything. So that means it absolutely does affect fertility and your hormonal balance. Um, And it also, what we know is that your gut microbiome sets up your baby's gut microbiome. So if not for you, then for them, for your unborn child or your your, um, little human that you are wanting to create for their future, because we know that so much of what happens in mum's gut gets passed on to bub's gut. And we know that what you are born with in terms of your gut microbiome, you know, it, it's, a, it's a bit of a template. It's, we, can, we can change it to an extent, but there are a lot of things that we can't change as well. So I think that that's just so important to consider as well. Um, the other thing that's really important to know here is that if you have the opportunity to have your gut issues looked at and addressed before trying to conceive, it also can allow us a little bit more of an expansive toolkit to heal those gut issues. So I do treat people that are pregnant or breastfeeding with gut issues. However, the thing that slightly works against us if you are already pregnant is that there are certain herbs, nutrients that we can't use um, that we would otherwise be able to if you weren't pregnant that can often help speed up the process a little bit. So it's not impossible, but I would say in an ideal ideal situation, absolutely, yes. Um, I think it should be part of preconception care. I really do. I think optimizing both gut thyroid and hormonal health should be something that is just done as part of regular everyday planning for trying to conceive. And I'd say doing that a good three to six months before actively trying. But honestly, any time is better than no time. So if you're currently, you know, trying to conceive and you're like, oh, well, I don't have three to six months or I don't want to take three to six months, then do anything. One week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, anything is better than doing nothing. Um, Okay. Next question is, should healing your gut be a priority over thyroid issues? So the answer to that is they should both be corrected together. And you'll find that it's a if you start to heal your gut, your thyroid will also start to improve or it will make it easier for that to improve. And, you know, vice versa, your thyroid health can absolutely impact your gut. So for example, a lot of people with um, untreated or poorly managed underactive thyroids will experience something like constipation. And um, on the flip side, just to connect like some dots for you, the way that it works in reverse would be that having gut issues can compromise your ability to um, create your thyroid hormones as well. So I really believe that both should be addressed at the same time. But I have I always do come back to health starts in the gut. So that's just really important to remember. And that's why 
um, you know, in my thyroid rescue program, we actually have a gut healing component in there as well. So yes, both. I can't choose. Sorry. Um, okay. Is it normal to feel nauseous before and after a period? The answer to that is no. It's, it's common, but it's certainly not normal. Um, next question is, what's the difference between prebiotic and probiotic? Fantastic question. So in the most sim- simple terms possible, a probiotic is a beneficial bacteria um, that we can encapsulate and, and take. And a prebiotic is a food for the beneficial bacteria. So they could be food for um, any of the bacteria that live in your gut, actually. And there are lots of different kinds out there. When it comes to probiotics, something that's really important to remember is that it's probiotics work best when you actually match the exact strain that you want. So strain of probiotic, um, to the symptom or the condition that you're trying to treat. So the trap a lot of people fall into is just going out and buying a broad spectrum probiotic and thinking, well, the more different strains in here, the better. And I'm just going to take this because I've heard that probiotics are good for gut health. Um, The problem with that is that you're likely wasting your money. In some situations, you can be making things worse um, or just missing out on the benefit. Probiotics, when they're prescribed um, for the right purpose, for the right person, can be game changers. But I see a lot of people waste a lot of money on the wrong ones. Um, And that's, again, why it comes back to individualized treatment being really important in the context of gut issues. And then with prebiotics, likewise, I think that sometimes we can go out and just buy a random gut healing powder when we're not really sure actually what we're trying to specifically heal in our gut. And there are loads of different prebiotics, which are so beneficial. But again, it's really about, for the most part, matching what prebiotic we want to use for which specific purpose based on what's going on for you from a symptom perspective, um, from results we have from testing if we're, if that's available to us. Um, and that just really helps us to actually not waste our money and to get to the root of the problem faster. Okay, um, next question is, why do they call your gut the second brain? Oh my gosh, this is the biggest can of worms ever. So I'm going to try not to fall down the rabbit hole um, and perhaps I will do a separate podcast on this just on its own because I think it's so, so important. So a few little facts or little um, bits of information that can explain this is because There's this constant connection or constant conversation that goes on between your gut and your brain. And I think the easiest way for people to connect in with this on an intuitive level is to think about the fact that you get butterflies, which is something that is usually triggered by a thought that you're having. And then in your gut, you feel butterflies, right? Another one is the saying of, I just had a gut feeling or how you can feel sick to your stomach when you hear bad news. And so there's all these little connections that we know on a really instinctive, intuitive level. And what we also know to be true as far as, you know, science goes is that a lot of your neurotransmitters of your brain chemicals are actually created in your gut and so I think there's yeah there's so many different reasons why they call it the second brain Um, but I think it's something that is super important and there's so much research around you know studies looking at the gut health and in people with um, depression or doing probiotic trials with um, people who have mood disorders and showing an improvement in their symptoms. So um, there's just some really interesting stuff. And we actually go into a lot of this in Gut Rescue as well. So if you're keen to know more about that, then definitely come and join us for some more goodness. But as I said, I will try and put a more comprehensive podcast together on that topic because it is such a big one. 
Um, okay. Next question. Is psyllium husk a good addition to keep regular? Mm. I use psyllium husk occasionally and what psyllium husk does is often it, it kind of like creates more bulk in the stool to make it easier to pass by drawing. Often it draws water into your bowel. Now, it's not necessarily something that I would recommend to everyone because we first want to know, well, why are you constipated in the first place? And the second thing we also want to make sure of is to make sure there's no bacterial overgrowth that is contributing to that constipation because often psyllium husk won't necessarily make it better. Um, and sometimes I can find that in my patients who have quite inflamed guts, psyllium husk can be a bit irritating. So I guess the answer to that is it depends, which is such a frustrating answer, but I don't want to give you a bum steer. So um, it does depend. I think if you're looking for something that's probably – a little bit more gentle and that I don't really see being a problem for many people and can help with regularity, um, I would say um, partially hydrolyzed guar gum, PHGG. Though you, it is best to get that dosed by a practitioner usually because sometimes if you do have a lot of gut issues going on, you might actually have to play around with the dose um, to get the right one for you. So hopefully that answers that one. Um, and then the next question is, why am I bloated by everything I eat? This is so common and it breaks my heart because it's, it's horrible to feel bloated after you eat. It really is. It ruins the experience of food. It often creates anxiety for people and it just leaves you feeling like, Ugh, I know that personally, cause I've had a lot of gut issues in the past and it just, it's horrible. So to answer the question, um, why am I bloated after everything I eat? Usually if like, there's obviously many different reasons for why this could be happening. So, um, it could be as simple as you're eating too quickly. You're having too much water when you're eating. It might be that you don't have enough stomach acid. It may be that you you are feeling upset or anxious when you're eating and that's compromising your ability to digest. Or more commonly, it may be that there is a bacterial overgrowth or an imbalance in your gut that actually needs correcting. So one hint that there is potentially a bacterial overgrowth going on for someone is that they get that feeling of being really bloated within about kind of 30 to 90 minutes after they eat. Um, and that can be super Super common and it is treatable. It absolutely is. But again, we need to find out, well, what is overgrown and then prescribe supplements and food recommendations accordingly. So if um, you are listening to this episode, the person who asked that question, or you are someone who you're like, oh yeah, I'm bloated after everything I eat too, then please join us in Gut Rescue because this is exactly what we help you resolve. Um, and Sonia and I have been in this industry collectively for over two decades. So we get it. We know what um, you're feeling and we also know how to help you get to a place where that's not happening. So I can't be too much more specific than that just because it's it's a bit of like a can of worms question and something that does require some more questioning from a practitioner, some more testing often, um, and definitely something that is more individualized in terms of getting you a result there. Okay, let me just quickly check if there were any other questions. No. Okay, so that is it for part two of the gut health Q&A. As I said, if you have more questions, whether they're gut related guys or whether they are thyroid related, hormone related, please feel free to keep sending them through. I am so happy to keep creating more of these Q&A podcasts if it's something that you are enjoying. Um, and I'm also open to some more topic suggestions or interviews. So keep them coming and I hope to see many of you in the Gut Rescue Program soon. Please make sure you share this episode and the Gut Rescue Program with any of your friends or fam that could benefit. 
As I said, there are only a handful of spots left and the cart is going to be closing really soon. So when you do sign up, program access begins on the 1st of Feb, but the first week um, is simply just a week to get settled in, print things off, ask your questions, book your first consultation, um, and then we officially begin on the 8th of Feb. So mums out there, you'll have plenty of time to get settled settled back into the school routine before kicking off Um, and I'm so excited. All right, I will speak to you all very soon. 